what's going on tyler thank you so much for doing this of course man yeah just uh in my home studio here um yeah like living living the dream man living the dream i love that yeah. cool so i uh, grew born and raised in canada can you tell me a little bit about that oh my gosh i mean free health care right <laughs> there you uh, go <laughs> <laughs> um no i was i was born and raised in in vancouver so west coast kid for sure right um and it wasn't until uh 19 when i turned 19 that i i actually went this is pretty much unheard of because no one ever leaves the West Coast, but I left Vancouver to go to university on the other side of the country. Oh, wow. Uh, a province called Prince Edward Island. Um, and that was kind of like the biggest change for me ever. Mm -hmm. um, I actually went on a soccer scholarship. So that was oh. like, that was my, that was my focus, right? I was really trying to, um, trying to have that be the lane for my career. Sure. But in the midst of all that, like I started playing music when I was 13 and that was my outlet, you know, whenever mm -hmm. I was, I was stressed as a, as a youth or a teenager, like I would, I would go to music to like just vent and get all my feelings out and put it into music. So it was always a part of me. That's awesome. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So what, how, when did you get into music? You said 13 was when you started what playing, but prior to that. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Playing and, and writing my own stuff. Um, wow. you know, that's kind of like the earliest memories that I've had of like, that's kind of when it all started for me um guitar and, was yeah. the, your the instrument first instrument drums actually it's my first oh, instrument. drums when yeah did you learn my, drums? my older brother joined the school band in uh when he was in middle school and i was still in elementary or somewhere around there mm -hmm. and he i thought he was the coolest kid ever sure. so i was like i want to be like my older brother so of course, of uh course. when i when i entered uh middle school that's when i started uh i was like yeah i'm gonna join the band just like my brother did and mm -hmm. i'm gonna play the drums so that was like my first instrument, you know, jamming along. We eventually got a drum kit at home. Um, my mom was actually uh, a piano teacher. She never taught uh -huh. us, us as kids, but there was always <laughs> a piano in the house. Sure. Well, so I, that's that, interesting. Did you, were you guys just not interested in it or she just didn't push it on you guys or? She didn't push it. Yeah, she didn't push it at all. I remember she actually signed us up for uh, piano lessons one time and hated it. Like did one lesson and i was like no i i this is not for me at all. <laughs> sure so um yeah man it was a very musical very musical house um mm -hmm. which was which definitely lent to the i guess inspiration behind oh let's let's try to write some music um That's awesome. the, in the interesting thing too is like i never i never liked doing covers you know huh. usually first starting out you hear a lot of people covering yeah, go right right to cover great sure. covers my mentality since day one and still to this day is like, why would I recreate someone else's song when I can just create my own? So yeah. that was kind of like just dove into that and and started writing as much as I can. Lyrics, melodies, music, everything. Wow. Um, Didn't you win like a covers contest or something? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's, <laughs> the, that's the irony in all this, right? So um yeah that was actually when i was in university my my best friend he told me about this this whole submission thing and i was like ah oh, man like a i hate doing covers b i got i got finals to study for like ain't nobody got time for this um but then i ended up doing it and i'm so glad that i did because that kind of that kick started my whole career so that's awesome yeah. well, we'll get that and have a second so like so prior to that, you said 13, you're writing songs and that's yeah. when you picked up a guitar. When did yeah. you start like showing people your songs or did you play? I mean, you said you're into soccer, so I don't know how much time you had to like really go to open mic nights and stuff, but. Um, you know what? My brother actually did improv nights at a local cafe. So oh, okay. like, I don't know, probably within six months of, of writing my first songs, I would do the intermission. Uh, okay. um, so he would do his like improv thing with his crew. I would do, I would do like a small 15 minute set and then they would do the second half of their show. So it was really like, a, I don't know. It was really, it was really cool to intertwine our, our both cra our, our two crafts. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. And then still, still kind of, uh, you know, performing with your, with your brother, you said you, you look up to him obviously, and then yeah. the drums and then, you yeah. know, kind of following with, with him on stage. That's really rad. Yeah, yeah, it was really, it was really cool. It was really cool. That's awesome. Um, so you went to university for on a soccer scholarship. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. uh, like I said, that was like my that was like my main focus. Um, mm -hmm. But then obviously this whole 
this whole uh, competition came up and really changed my mind about opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought in my heart, I was just like, this is the way that I need to go. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm really glad that I did. Like, I, I can't see myself doing anything else. Sure. So, I think everybody else is pretty glad that you did that as well. I yeah, mean, wow. yeah. You know, <laughs> super thankful, obviously, for all the support. So That's it's been awesome. great, man. Yeah. What was the song that you covered? <sighs> Dude, I don't even remember. <laughs> I, oh, I remember I remember Rolling in the Deep by Adele. I did a cover of that one. But the other ones, I think it was like a Britney Spears cover. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Oh my God. I don't even remember. <laughs> I remember like, those two. Yeah. Did you submit like a rolling in the deep, like a video of yourself playing it or something like yeah, that? Yeah. Contest happen. Yeah, exactly. So like I filmed everything. Um, I think I played keys on that one and then the rest were just like on acoustic guitar and I just like changed them up and made them my own. Mm-hmm. Um, like they don't even sound really like the, the originals too, too much. That's um, yeah, again, it kind of goes down to like, I don't want to recreate someone or I don't want to like play someone else's song. I want to still have a creative, uh, creative edge to it. So sure. Yeah. So then you win this contest. And you, do you have to go like once you're you're did you win off the video or did you have to like, OK, that got you into the contest and then you had to kind of like. If there was like three or four different rounds. So I went like the first video got me in the door and then you had to submit like two or three other videos and that got me. Um, to like the final three and then they they ended up sending me to Toronto to be part of like the um, there's like a national broadcast like the MMVAs uh, used to happen like the MTV awards right um, sort of thing um, and that's when they announced the whole thing and after that like I met Sony Music signed a deal and released my first song and that song went double platinum and that was just like <laughs> boom welcome welcome to the music industry yeah that is rad wow yeah. okay so you put that was kiss goodnight that was kiss goodnight exactly okay yeah. so you put that song out and it goes crazy um yeah do you get like at that point are you offered tours like what was the next step from there did you have a record um, that you had to kind of put together yeah it was like no one really was expecting that because like i literally was a nobody you know what i mean mm-hmm. um and then everything just started happening. Everyone really loved the song and um, it showed. So uh, everyone was like, okay, like let's, let's do another song and then let's, let's do an album. Mm-hmm. So in that time, it was like me just trying to figure out, Hey, what the hell is doing? <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, I, I, this was my first time in a professional writing room, so to speak mm-hmm. with professional writers and producers and stuff. So I was a very big learning curve for me. Um, but it was all so exciting. And I just, I loved the process uh, like so much. So it was really interesting. That first album, like I'm not going to throw shade on it. It was, it's a great album, but like you can tell, I'm just trying to figure out where I want to go in terms of like sonics and storytelling and all that. So that was uh, that was a really experimental time Mm -hmm. uh, within the music and within the writing. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of those songs did really well. I mean, aside from yeah. Kiss Goodnight, I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah, House of Cards, Wicked, um, By My Side, like a, a lot. Of, I think we had six singles off that album, and um, all of them did pretty pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that House of Cards is another record that went gold. I mean, that's huge. Yes, yeah, yeah, that one yeah. did go gold. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And then from like once that's happening, where were you at? at university did you have to like go to your soccer coach and be like yo uh (laughs) this music thing is kind of really working out for me (laughs) yeah so that that whole that whole uh like music career started let's say i signed the deal in december of 2012 um and the and the competition and the competition started or ended on in april 2012 so i had the summer off because school is done in the summer Mm -hmm. and that's kind of when i made the transition being like i'm not going to go back to school I'm going to move to Toronto where I am now okay. and, and just, you know, keep my head down and just focus and just put all my time and energy into, into making this a career. Mm-hmm. Was that a hard conversation to have? I mean, I'm sure like your teammates and everybody else were kind of like, Oh, but I'm sure yeah, I mean, stoked too. Right. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, everyone was pretty excited with the, with the, you know, me being a part of the team and everything. And I was excited to be a part of the team like that soccer was a huge part of Mm -hmm. like just my overall mental health even you know being a part of such a such a strong core of of guys that are there to support you on the pitch off the pitch you know Mm -hmm. 
um, it was really, it was really important for me. Mm -hmm. So to have that just like stop in an instant was very, um, it was hard. It was a hard transition yeah. to make, but, um, you know, I, I'm here now, which is, which is great. So yeah. it, it all worked out. It all worked out. And, sure. I, you know, I, I still in touch with the, I'm still in touch with the coach even and, and with a bunch of the guys from the team. So it's, uh, it's not like it was just, you know, cold Turkey, I'm out of here kind of thing. It's sure. uh, we still keep in touch, which is nice. That is really cool. Um, yeah. with, with that first record where did you get to go on a tour or what was that experience like? That one, like, because I had one song, I didn't really have too much material. Um, uh -huh. it wasn't until like I had most of the first album done. Um, that's when I went and I did like small, like obviously some small, small shows. No, actually. Yes. Okay. This is really crazy. Uh, so kiss goodnight came out. December 2013 something like that uh-huh um and I don't know if you've heard of we day before no I haven't okay so it, it was a thing I don't know if it's a thing anymore but it's basically this charity that throws massive like arena type events sure wow um to just like inspire the next generation and make a difference in the world mm -hmm. um so after that song came out they heard the song i guess and they were like we want tyler on our stage and i was like yeah it's probably like a cafe thing whatever <laughs> and this is keep in mind this is coming from you know prince edward island which is not a big town at all you know i was doing open mic nights and bar nights there mm -hmm. and like fast forward seven months eight months later i'm in front of eighteen thousand people <laughs> with myself and an acoustic guitar playing this song that i wrote like three months prior you know what I mean? It was, yeah. uh, it was such a crazy experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> was that like up. one of the most nerve wracking experiences of your life or was it like oh, yeah. super exciting? <laughs> I mean, or obviously both. Probably both like, yeah. It was uh, like to be up there and just like so new, so fresh, like still had baby fat on my cheeks. You know what I mean? Like just, <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, it was, it was intense, but you know, that, that, that high you get from, from being on stage and then coming off the stage, you're like, holy shit, that was awesome. Like, yeah. The adrenaline was just pumping. That is cool. That's really awesome. And then, okay, so fast forward, then you put, you put Yesterday out. Yeah. Did, did, did that, after the full record came out, did you do another tour? Or after that, was it like, okay, I'm going to just go back to, to writing what became, you know, into it? Um, yeah, I think, I think after that first album came out, I did a few... I did a few shows across the country and um, I don't think I did like a full on tour for that album though. Okay. I think it was just uh, like a few one-offs here and here, a couple festivals here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I never did go on a tour for that album actually. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, fast forward to, to intuition, which actually took like three, almost two, almost three years to, to make wow. um, just because it was, I was going through so many different stages Mm -hmm. uh of, of self-discovery um and i think the biggest turnaround for me was when i took a trip to hong kong with my father um oh, okay and if you don't know like i'm, I'm half chinese and mm -hmm. long story short my father wasn't really in the picture growing up um because my parents got divorced at a young age mm -hmm. so this was like a very eye-opening trip for me um you know, I, this is the side of, of me that I never really understood or never really knew. So to have this trip to Hong Kong with my father to see like where he grew up, um, you know, he went to uh, cemeteries where my great grandparents were born. I went to wow. like where his high school was and met his high school friends and all of that. And um, his parents are still living. So like that was like my first time seeing them in like 10 years. That's so it was, really uh, cool. yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. And it was, you know, I saw the value in 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 what that culture represents and that mm -hmm. really touched me uh quite a bit so that's why like the artwork you can see behind me has that asian uh, chinese influence yeah i love it um, even on your instagram next to your name you have that it's yeah so, cool. so that's my chinese name i've always had that name um mm -hmm. but i just i never really knew the significance of that name until after that trip that's awesome so yeah yeah so that was kind of really inspired that next record Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was in the midst of writing that, but that was like the turning, turning point for intuition is like, okay, like I understand now I understand more about myself, which means I understand more about my artistry. Sure. 
Sure. So that's kind of where it nailed uh, nailed the record. Where you listen from track one to track, I think there's eleven. Uh -huh. Eleven. You can. There's a cohesiveness to the entire track uh, uh, sequence. The whole record. Okay. The whole record. Yeah. And I co-produced the whole thing uh, with my good friend uh, Alex, and we just had like such a blast in the studio doing it. It was, it was such a fun, fun time. Yeah. That's cool. Did you ever think like, was it hard to think, you know, with the success of kiss Goodnight, And then, I mean, uh, of course the other songs on the previous record yeah. to kind of follow that, or were you not even thinking about that album was just like, I did that and it was awesome. And I'm now moving forward. Yeah. It was more of that, that type of energy. It's like that happened. Fantastic. Um, uh -huh. But like, I got, I got new stuff to say. I have new material to write. Mm -hmm. um you know obviously there's a little bit of pressure being like oh will my songs ever do as good as the last success uh, successful song sure sure but at the same time like you can't let that get into your head as a songwriter as a as a producer you're just like you write what you feel and mm -hmm. hopefully that dictates on if you feel something with the song generally the audience will feel that same emotion or a different kind of emotion take it in their own uh mm -hmm. kind of experience and feel some type of way sure i mean because that, yeah. that sophomore album is always kind of like the the make it break it i mean a lot yeah. of bands will put that first record out and it'll go huge and then they'll yeah. try to follow it up and it just kind of goes you know yeah the exactly. opposite direction but with that album for you i mean <laughs> you still have a, a you have a huge plaque behind you to do the yeah. record i mean that's yeah, that so one, sick yeah thanks man yeah that one was nominated for uh for a pop album of the year uh for a juno which is the equivalent to the grammys yeah the grammys year. that's so huge yeah. tell me about that did you get to go to the award show and that must have been a big deal yeah i actually that year uh this album was nominated i performed on the stage um, wow and you know what it was it was cool it was kind of like a full circle moment because remember that story i told you about you know going from bars to performing in front of eighteen thousand 18, people and sure i did the exact same thing that year <laughs> i went out there just myself and acoustic guitar uh played the hit with you off of the intuition album uh -huh. and just just played it right there raw nothing else no backing tracks nothing it was just me and my guitar <laughs> yeah wow and then that's televised and everything i'm sure yeah yeah. What was My that? Was us, that your yeah. first time ever playing on TV? No, no, no. Okay. I've done like a bunch of different like news shows, TV oh, sure. shows. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But the best. So. I mean, being in that audience. I mean, that's you're just surrounded by your peers of musicians. That's even. Yeah, more that's a, it definitely kind of like... a di is a different type of audience, and right. a lot of I a lot of eyes in the industry are just like, oh, is he gonna be flat? Oh, is he gonna be? Is he gonna mess up that chord? You know. Sure. Thankfully, I. I fucking nailed, nailed it. it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters, man. That's so cool. Um, and then from there, you kind of re you really you've always kind of released Christmas songs. You have like a yeah, that kind of like a holiday that holds to your close to you or what, yeah, man. What's like the significance. I, I I think my voice just sounds good on Christmas records. I think <laughs> <laughs> you know I I actually give uh, a lot of credit to you know the King of Christmas, Michael Bublé, oh, for. Sure teaching me how to sing because growing up I would throw his record on uh mm -hmm. Christmas and otherwise sure. and just like sing his stuff all wow. like belt it belt it belt it belt it um so he has a lot of influence in certain like uh cadences and, and intonations that my my voice does mm -hmm. um so I guess that kind of in turn is like that's why Christmas records do so well for me is that I have that warmth and that that lush, uh, that lush vibrato and, and, sure. and stuff like that on a Christmas record. So, mm -hmm. um, I think I think the next step now. I think I've released what four different Christmas records. I think uh -huh. it's time to like do a full album. You know, you should. Yeah, I mean, they're smashes. I mean, even with the most recent one you put out was maybe this Christmas, and then, like I love the photo on your Instagram. You're like. Uh, in the like there you have that huge like board behind you yeah you're standing in the middle yeah the i don't board, i'm not yeah. sure where you are where you but i'm sure it's like a huge square you have the big amazon yeah. music thing behind you it's so exactly sick. it's like the <laughs> it's like a Times square of canada it's called dundas square in toronto so that's so rad that must yeah. have been huge to have that up there yeah that was that was really cool to see yeah that's amazing um and i, I want to talk to you about your your new song and the new music you have coming out but i'm, I'm totally. curious where where you were you know, right prior to, to when COVID hit and the whole world shut down, 
like, yeah. were working on that record at that time? Or, like, tell me where you were when that all happened. Totally. So I can actually answer, like, talking about When You're Home, the next single, or the, the single that I just released. Uh -huh. I wrote that in the UK right before the pandemic just, like, blew up. <laughs> yeah. So I was in I was in the UK at the end of at the end of March, I think it was. Um, and, you know, there's like a few things going on. Oh, have you heard about this, this virus? Oh, have you heard about this thing? Whatever. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure. But I go out there anyway, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, at um, the time, nobody knew. I mean, they're no, like, of yeah, course it's not. a thing. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you know, everyone thought it would be, you know, a couple of weeks and then it's over. Here right. We are. Right. We'll see you later. <laughs> um, no. So I, I go into the studio. I had this voice note on my phone from like weeks and weeks ago. Um, and this is the session I go into. I don't know what, you know, I had sessions prior to this, but I don't know what mm -hmm. made me bring this voice note up in that session that day. No idea. I just did though. And it was like, it was like that waltzy vibe, like da, 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 that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And I sat down on the piano and I started playing that, that riff that you hear at the intro. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And everyone, there was two other guys in the room with me and we were just like, yes, like let's, Let's, let's go for it. Let's dive in. Mm -hmm. That song took us 45 minutes to write. Oh, wow. 45 minutes. And I've never experienced a feeling on a song before like, like this. It, it, it's so unusual for, for, I guess it's not unusual. It's just, I've never felt this way about a song before, mm -hmm. you know, writing it 45 minutes done. You know, we stepped out for a, for a bite, a pint, come back listen to it on fresh ears couldn't stop smiling that's like, crazy that's so awesome is is the most incredible feeling so very quick session uh -huh. and uh like loved it absolutely mm -hmm. loved it and then so the song's done you finish in 45 minutes and then yeah. you, fl you fly home and then kind of under the like like yeah so did, were you able to obviously make it back prior yeah. to like lockdowns and all that yeah i think the day the day I got back into Canada, um, or no, it wasn't the day. I got back into, into Canada. The next day I had to fly to, to Calgary mm -hmm. um, for, a, for a show. I flew the day I was supposed to fly to Calgary, or the day I did fly to Calgary, the mm -hmm. NBA got canceled. The NHL, uh, got, the NHL got canceled. Like, okay. Everything got canceled. My gig got canceled that day while I was in <laughs> Calgary. Um, everything just like just like stopped happening. So mm -hmm. from Calgary, I was actually supposed to go down to Los Angeles mm -hmm. to finish up my album or just to write more, write more of the record for the, for the new, for the new record that obviously didn't happen. So I flew back uh, to Toronto and just was like, well, uh, guess I'm home now. Like, well, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm sure. supposed to be here and then I have this show coming out. I'm supposed to do this tour and do this thing. And, mm -hmm. But you know, we were just sitting at home, you know? Yeah. Jeez. Wow. And then I did see that you, you've had a, a baby in the, in the time span as well. Yeah. So this so is like the probably whole... threw something else into the whole mix. Yeah. <laughs> I have man, two like... kids, dude. So I understand, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So this was like, a, this was like the silver lining, I guess, of the whole thing is, I guess, two things. Like uh, when I got back to just, and just realized that I was going to be sitting here, you know, for, for who knows how long at that point for almost a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it took me a while to like understand that. And that, that was like mentally exhausting for me. I was like, what the, what the fuck's going on? Like, right. ah. and is it hard to like write and be inspired at that point. Yeah. It took me like a good two, maybe three weeks to be like, Oh, okay. Uh, here's where I'm going to be <laughs> working. New life, you know, right? this is new life, which is totally fine. But within that two to three weeks, like I took a lot of time to myself, which I don't usually get, mm -hmm. which I feel like, you know, neurologically might have done something, fired off some some stuff in my brain to make me readjust into the writing of this new record. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like this is my best material yet. And because I had that two to three week window where I was just reflecting on myself, on my relationships, on my friendships, on my family, like everything, mm -hmm. everything. I got a better, a more better understanding of myself and everything around me, which mm -hmm. 
from, like I said before, makes it, uh, it reflects in the artistry. Sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for, for that. Um, and I'm thankful that I was given that opportunity, I guess. The other silver lining is, yeah, I was able to, <laughs> you know, be here for my wife during the entire pregnancy, so um, cool. which, which was incredible, incredible to be a part of. And our daughter was born uh, in December. So, wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. I love Thank the photo you. Of, of you on your Instagram. You're having, you have like kangaroo time style. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's like in the, the little, I forgot the, the rap thing. Yeah. The rap thing. Yeah. yeah. And you're like working on a record. I love that photo. That's yeah. So awesome. I mean, we're, you know, work doesn't stop. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. so tell me, so after obviously a couple of weeks, you, you start working on the new record and, and that's where you're kind of at now. Yeah, I think we're at the tail end of things. Um, you know, we I've been diving in, uh, especially in the in quarter four of 20, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's just kind of last minute sessions here and there trying to like really just nail it and finalize everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the album is set to come out in the springtime. And I'm extremely excited about it. It's got the same, you know, raw honesty, purity, um, concepts and fresh new melodies um from from me but mm -hmm. um obviously with the signature voice that you know sure um so it's been it's been a really fun time to create and uh i actually have a session later today so <laughs> to kind of <laughs> see what happens um but yeah it's been it's been a really cool time that's amazing and then you're you're going to release uh like a stripped down version of when you're home as well yes how did yeah. how'd that come about tell me about that a little bit well, since the since the song was written on piano, I just felt like it warranted uh, a stripped down piano mm -hmm. version. Sure. Um, and obviously, if you hear the produced version, it's acoustic guitar with like Motown drums and, and electric and all that, mm -hmm. which is great too. Obviously, the record sounds fantastic, but I yeah, do feel I like the there's song. some. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I do feel like there's some emotion that you do capture when it's just keys and a and a vocal. Sure. And I mean, that says something about the song as well. They always say, like, if you can play it, like, totally stripped down and it sounds yeah. amazing, then the, the campfire test. Yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. The campfire test. I love yeah. that. Awesome, man. Well, and then what about promoting it? I know, obviously, yeah. we're doing a rad interview and I appreciate that. Yeah. But like, go, are you going live, like on your Instagram or anything like that? Like, I think I will. Yeah. Once once the album kind of comes out and there's more material released, I'll go live more frequently. But right now I'm just so focused on, um, you know, getting the proper vocals uh, when the when my daughter's not screaming, um, <laughs> getting, you know, getting the production right on, on every single song and just really focusing in on, on getting this album wrapped in, and ready for everybody. So once it's once it's done, I can kind of focus in um on promoting it obviously i can't go on tour so everything's gonna have to be done over social media sure. um so i'll have to stay engaged as much as possible there yeah but uh yeah uh we gotta we gotta adjust so <laughs> i love that tyler yeah. dude thank you so much for doing this i really appreciate it um My i pleasure. have one more question for you for i want to sure. know if you have any advice for aspiring artists oh man like how much time do you have? No, <laughs> I have all the time in the world. How much time no, do you have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I have so much advice, honestly, and I wish I could like write a book about it, but uh, speaking of books, you should actually go grab everything you need to know about the music business. That's a oh, great sure. book to know. Um, but in terms of advice coming from me, keep your integrity uh, and just practice as much as you can. Um, but with that being said, like if you run into writer's block, that's okay. And that took me a long time to actually understand. It's like, it's okay. Um, if nothing comes of a session, it's okay that you can't write something, uh, every single day, just step away and you come back whenever you're ready. That's fine. Bring me the bad word.